quickly here because I think some people are being like, like a bunch of people have said, oh, I didn't know you are you commercially available now. So this week we are in Trondheim in Norway, at the northern tip of Norway where the sun never sets in the summer. Uh, we're here for a science conference called Eyeball. It's the International Barcode of Life conference. Uh, Bethan, what are we doing here? We're here to find out a bit more about what's going on in the field of DNA barcoding at the moment. I'm what's, excited. What's DNA barcoding? So DNA barcoding is looking at a particular fragment of DNA to identify a species. I think that we also have a couple of um, Bento Lab people here, so I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing how it's going for them. Scientific Director of the International Barcode of Life Consortium. It's a group of 33 nations that have joined forces to advance our understanding of biodiversity on the planet. What's your vision for the community in the next 30, 40 years? What, what would you like to achieve? Uh, in the next 25 years, we will complete the inventory of life on the planet, I'm quite sure of that, uh -huh. multicellular life, and we'll also uh, in place a uh, global biosurveillance system that's tracking shifts in the distribution and abundance of species. So, <laughs> to get a bit dark. My name is Dirk Steinke. I work at the University of Guelph, so the birthplace of DNA barcoding. I've been to all conferences, all eight. So I've seen this progression over time from the first one being more like convincing a community and a lot of other people that barcoding is actually something worth to pursue mm -hmm. to a point where I see now the transition into, into more applied in a very broad context. So right. where the conference takes it, it's not about anymore convincing anybody on this, in this community that barcoding works, which it was in prior right. conferences. Is, and now we're looking at more like what can what else can you do with it? It's a community and it, it's it's growing. So initially it was a very small community, dominated probably by people that had a vested interest in taxonomy and mm -hmm. um, species discovery and the biodiversity as a core thing. But now it's growing further. You see a lot more ecologists here. Okay, right. Because the data is there to actually do ecology as they wanted to do it all the time. Cool. So they're embracing the method more. And you have really detailed knowledge on the genetics, and we get more and more insight in the behavior of our beloved molecules. And this is pretty cool. <laughs> What's our plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? Uh, I'm trying to go to the right concert by Sting. Hey. Oh, oh, the, what did you do? Uh, maybe 19, last day. Oh, I like message from the bottom. So we are enjoying the Sting 3 month ish concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but we're outside. Nice. No. It would be great if you could explain just a little bit about YCAM and also YCAM bioresearch and, <laughs> and barcoding. I are the Yamaguchi Center for Arts and Media. We are making an art exhibition, an educational workshop related to media technology. Mm -hmm. We started a bioresearch project. Yeah. The purpose of uh, our project is uh, to uh, think up about the uh, application possibility of uh, biotechnology with a uh, city mm -hmm. And now you have a laboratory in your arts center? Yeah. And you do workshops, you go into the forest to do barcoding? I'm very interested in a presentation by the forum. Ah, mm, yeah. yeah, I talked to him today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. Yeah. He was, I, I was interesting, I talked to him and he, of course, his vision in terms of everything being barcoded and repeatedly barcoded yeah. so the changes are seen. Yeah. But also, he talked a lot about the potential of citizen scientists yeah, yeah. And, and lots of people getting yeah. involved. Yeah. Did you did you present uh, or did, does he know of the YCAM? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, uh, he said uh, to me, uh, project uh, of the citizen science is uh, so interesting. Yeah, you're an artist now. You are basically Paul Herbert tells you at the DNA barcoding conference that your project is really yeah. mm -hmm. exciting and interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, that's, that's how quickly you can really uh, do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. on lion poop and disease analysis. What are people's most common comments or questions about Bentolab? How do you fit all that in one box? And a lot of people were asking us about whether or not you can like transport Bentolab around with you and kind of take it outside of a lab. And it's, a pretty, it's a pretty satisfying feeling when someone comes up to you and they're like, ooh, I'm just about to start a project with one of these. Yeah. That feels pretty cool. And I also love the reaction when somebody has never seen one and kind of can't believe it. Like, so what is this? So uh, there's a centrifuge and here, like, and there's so a PCR there, and then there's gel, and oh, cool! So it's like a whole lab, and it's like f less than four kilos. What witchcraft is this? It's been a really fun four days in Trondheim. And the days before in Berlin. Yeah, it was really interesting to hear about some of the, the challenges that people are working with. And also it was really nice to see how excited people were to finally see kind of Ventilab. Eyeball was a reminder of exactly why we started Ventilab in the first place, which is we wanted to enable really awesome science that is pushing the boundaries and we get to be a small part of that. Anyway, uh, off to London. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Stay.